first like to ask you to present yourself and the school you're working with. So my name is Will Toussaint. Uh, I work for Naoma Business School, which is based in France. I work in um, as a recruitment manager for executive in education in the Paris campus. But uh, we have another, we have two other campuses, one in um, Champagne and the other in Normandy. Okay, thank you. Um, so how can applicants best convey their fit to the program that they're applying to in Neoma? So I think in terms of, um, you know, this will be kind of my go-to answer for, for a lot of these questions is that we run very small programs, you know, comparative to like when you compare them to, um, you know, some of the American programs, uh, which are much, much larger. So uh, I think we do things perhaps on a more individualized, like personalized basis. So my advice is in terms of like, you know, finding the right fit or the right profiles to interact with the admissions uh, and recruitment staff, which is which is me and my, my colleagues actually, so. Okay, and uh, with regards to the application process, what are some common mistakes that applicants can easily avoid? I think um, you know, it's uh, that that that's a good question because I think there are a lot of easily avoidable mistakes, um, you know, and and typically these come up in the essay part, which is generally like um, you know that's kind of part of every admissions process is um, explaining yourself, describing your motivation, um, and okay, I mean I think you know the the, the spelling mistakes and. Um, uh, maybe not very concise writing. Um, I mean, the the harder you work on your essays, I think the easier it makes for us as an admissions staff because we do everything very personalized. That means we read all the essays and um, and just having kind of concise, clear, error-free um, essays is is pretty pretty strong way that you can avoid some some mistakes actually. Okay. Uh, so besides the essay, which is really important, uh, what is uh, what is a common mistake during the interview, for example? Uh, you know, I think actually in terms of um, the 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 point is actually to get to know the applicant as a person, like what they are like to work with. Um, you know, what are their goals? What are what motivates them? Um, so I I think in terms of uh, you know not being able to communicate who you are actually, uh, which is kind of a skill that we, we focus on in, in our programs actually, this personal development, being able to communicate who you are and what, what um, you know, like your presentation skills. So I think, you know, you know being able to relate or being able to communicate um, what type of personality you are and, and your experiences clearly. I think, you know, there's some people may get off of topic and, uh, you know, talk about only their job, um, you know, which can be a vehicle to like knowing a little bit more, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm interested in knowing about you as a person. So, you know, like I want to hear kind of, um, you know, uh, personal stories actually. So, yeah. Okay. And what about some questions that uh, uh, candidates can ask during the interview? What are some good examples? Uh, good examples. I mean, I, you know, in terms of uh, uh, an easy answer to that is like uh, questions that show that you've done your research. So that goes across every single program out there. You know, if you've done your research, uh, you know, and, and um, you're asking questions that take more than just looking at the website. Clearly, I'm going to be more interested in you as a candidate because you've done your homework. So. Okay. Yeah. And with regards to admissions tests, do you accept uh, GMAT and GRE, and do you have perhaps a school-specific test? Yeah, I think actually. So in terms of uh, the, we have discussed doing a, a kind of internal test, but for now it is the GMAT and GRE. And just kind of my advice on that um, is that, the, I mean, the GMAT is always the most, it's generally like the primary test that people take for business school admissions. But, um, you know, the GRE can be maybe helpful if you have a different set of strengths or, um, and but ultimately actually what we do, and I think most schools do this, is they translate the GRE score into a GMAT score. 
So. All right. And with regards to the GMAT or GRE, uh, do you favor some sections over others, and why? No, I think actually in terms of we're very un like we're we're we we accept and we recommend standardized testing, but um, you know. I think in terms of like the size of our classes, we, we don't have this strong emphasis on standardized testing. It's more a personal interaction and, uh, you know, the interview is very important. But, um, I mean, I think in terms of like the standardized tests, what I know about the, or what I see is that, you know, we're, we're trying to see your quantitative abilities. And I think that's generally most business schools want to, want to see that actually. I mean, the overall score, and then can you handle the math, like the finance and, and these types of subjects, so. All right, yeah. um, and with regards to scholarships, uh, how important is the GMAT score or yeah. any other criteria for yeah. getting a scholarship? So yeah, I, I mean, I think that I get this question all the time. I think in terms of the GMAT, it's um, the example I use if you take two candidates and uh, you know, have the similar background, similar experiences, similar um, um, profile uh, and you know they're applying both applying for a scholarship and one has a 700 GMAT and one has a 600 uh, it's pretty hard to argue against giving it to the 700 um, so I mean just kind of on this this level actually I think the GMAT can be kind of a powerful tool because it's an unbiased um, uh, uh, measurement so.